Hello, my name is Samuel George London and welcome to Comics for the Apocalypse. On today's episode, I speak to comic book writer and stupendously stand-up chap, John Late, about what comics he would take into the apocalypse. But before we get into it, we're just two reviews away from getting an average score on iTunes. So if you do have the time, please submit a quick review for the podcast there, and we'll hopefully start heading up the charts and popping up in people's suggested feed. More the merrier and all of that. Uh, anyhow, without further ado, on with the show. Hello, John Late. How are you doing? Hello, Samuel George London. I'm all right, mate. You? Yeah, good, man. Good. Um, been, a, been a fairly relaxing uh, Sunday in, in Windsor with some friends. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just uh, relaxing in front of the telly for a little bit. What about yourself? Living the dream, mate. Um, oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> uh, an early morning early morning visit to the tip. That was well, amazing. Classic. Yeah, yeah, to take you a little bit of old fence uh, there. That was, that was enjoyable. And then a little walk uh, to the park with my two girls and the missus um because it looked quite nice when I looked out the window and then we went outside yeah. and it was uh flipping freezing so we spent yeah. about half an hour down there getting chased around by uh by them and came back and a little bit of footy and now talking to you you wonderful person magical sounds like a good sunday to me it was good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's straight up. Um, so, uh, for for anybody that doesn't know what you do in the world of comics, what exactly do you do in the world of comics? Uh, oh, well, not much at the minute, but <laughs> I'm, uh, of, I'm, I'm known, I suppose, uh, as a um, comic writer. I've, I've been doing it since around about 2015. First of all, I dipped my toe in the water then. Um, and it sort of began on then, really. It's only part time. I'm, I, I don't do it. It's, it's a bit of a more of a hobby than anything. But yeah, I do a little bit of writing and a little bit of editing, just on the side. Just starting to do a little bit more of that at the moment. So yeah, nice. that's pretty much where where I am in the comic world. And uh, and your titles include? Yep, uh, Brethren Born. Uh, one, Very one, good. two, and three. Thank you, mate. Um, I've done. I've, I've featured in a few uh, few anthologies, um, but uh, so like the uh, Little Heroes charity book. Um, I was in the first four editions of the Comic House anthology. Uh, I've also written a, a graphic novel that came out last year called Away. That was sort of the Amazing. big, the big one. I got to John, that was my favourite of last year. Oh, um, geez, it was uh, honestly, it was really my my, my favourite favourite comic and uh, graphic novel of last year. Um, I, th- I thoroughly enjoyed it, and you did a sterling job on that, mate. Ah, really. oh, cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. I'll give that ten out a little bit later. Um, but <laughs> it was, it, yeah, I really enjoyed doing it. It, it. it took a while to come out from from a writing point of view. And um, mm. Grant Richards, who did the art, traditional artist, and he does he does all these pencils and inks traditionally, not on, not digitally. So uh, it, it took a little bit of the time, but um, yeah, it was it was really enjoyable to do, and, and the feedback's been amazing. It was, the, I think, one of the first, well, well, the only time I've had a ten out of ten as a review so far. So that was lovely. Um, so yeah, that was that was uh, really enjoyable. And then um, probably the other most sort of the most uh, well known one is Late Nights, which is an all ages comic. That myself and Matt Strott have uh, created, which um, yeah, came out uh, at the beginning of last year. It's all rolling into one, um, and uh, issue two is imminently uh, imminently coming out on Kickstarter. Amazing! So if people just search "late nights," um, then it will uh, come up on Kickstarter, and that's late, uh, not as in your surname, but late as in it's late. L-A-T. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a little <laughs> bit of a play. It's a little bit of a play on words, obviously. Absolutely. Late, uh, it's, it, the family name is late, but it's uh, it's obviously very egotistical of me. But um, it's um, it's uh, it's great, about a, a young family who is or super spies, and at, they at night they become these sort of super spies. They live, have a normal life during the day, and then at night they get called on to do some um, amazing missions against all the bad guys. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's coming out uh, pretty soon. Amazing. Um, so yeah, people search for that uh, in Kickstarter and the, the Kickstarter link will be in the show notes so people can just click through right there. Um, now, uh, moving on uh, from that. Oh, and before we get get into the uh, the meat of the interview, um, where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook just as John Lake, J-O-N. 
uh, L-A-I-G-H-T, and on Twitter at Level 8 Comics. Those are my two main... I, I used to have a website. Uh, I've finished that website. Um, yeah. It was just costing a bit too much money, and yeah. I just this last... This last 12 months, just having the time to update it um, is, is really taking its toll. So uh, it's just those two at the moment, but you pretty much... Uh, oh, you know you can get me on Instagram as well, at, uh, at John Lane. Perfect. Awesome. And again, those those links are in the show notes. Um, now, moving on from that, um, I do have some bad news for you, I'm afraid, John. Oh, no. Um, oh. Because there's actually uh, been, been a bit of breaking news that there's been an artificial intelligent robot takeover. Um, and there's, there's actually been a proper robot uprising. Um, and uh, you're right in the middle of it. So my first question to you is, what is your action plan for survival? Okay, well, fortunately, um, I'm, I have to bear some responsibility for the actual AI robot takeover. Okay. Um, my um, my youngest daughter, Rhea, is an evil genius, which I've recently <laughs> discovered. Oh, dear. Yeah, and um, part of that, she was actually just playing on a Nintendo Switch um other kind game consoles are available uh and she um she inadvertently took over the world with a nintendo switch oh my god which, which is obviously and uh, given rise to the ai takeover um and it turns out she is actually the uh, the main artificial intelligence that's actually running the world so um, oh dear. i've got a bit of a vested interest um <laughs> Which can, is, is working working in both ways at the moment. Um, she's she's doing the business. She's obviously destroying most of civilization, which is yeah. fine. I'm very proud. I'm really proud of her. You know, she, uh, uh, yeah, in some ways, yeah. She's she's really really focused and and what what she's up to. Um, but you know, she's either spending doing that, you know, you know, killing millions of people, or <laughs> she's playing on. I think it's Mr. Toad. Um, it's a bit of both. So yeah, yeah, it's I've, I've had quite a lot of, uh, to do with it, to be honest. Oh dear! So your 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 action plan for survival is actually just to kind of sustain the takeover itself and kind of yeah, live, it, yeah, li- li- yeah. live in in I don't know what was it um, the, the the command HQ I guess yeah 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 that's um, currently that we've got like a cloud base um, and I just my main job is really um, supplying them with either cheese strings Great. or Oreo donuts. Essential. That's basically my job at the moment. Um, <laughs> but everything else sort of pales in, into uh, insignificance. Amazing. And so, um, what what happens is that on on one day during uh, your your duties, <laughs> um, yeah. your uh, your overlord daughter asks you um, <laughs> for uh, for your your thoughts and ideas on uh, on comics um, okay. because it's uh, it's integral to this new strategy that she's got to eliminate um, human society, basically. Um, okay. And so the first question that she asks is, uh, what's the first comic you remember enjoying? Well, we, we've had a few discussions of this because before she did actually take over, I, um, <laughs> she, had, she, had a, she had a playroom in our um, old human house. <laughs> and um, on the wall, there's a, a framed copy of the Beena. Um, and it's, it's not one of the old ones. It's not. It's it's fairly recent, and it was it was gifted to me from uh, some of the, some of my workmates when I left um, the unit I was actually working with, uh, and they they gave it to me. And she asked me what it was because she'd never seen it before. She just was looking at all those crappy comics that come with a free on the free pretend lipstick, and then it's just drivel, and it costs about four quid. Um, and I told her about it, and and so sort I of like read it, read, took it out the frame, and, and and read it with her, and she was she was interested in some of them, especially Dennis the Menace. And I think that's where she got a lot of her um, <laughs> Overlord uh, um, <laughs> personality <laughs> from. She said, yeah. yeah, yeah, complete complete sociopath. Um, so yeah, I, it was it was the Beano. That's that's the first one. I know that it's going to be for a lot of. Uh, British people around my yeah. my sort of age, and um, yeah, it was it was that. So I explained it to her and said what it was about, and lots of different stories, and all the different artists who who'd been involved. Um, so that was my first real memory. And then what what I am pleased is that she's really got into um, reading Tintin. Great. 
uh, this this last year. My my mom found some of my old Tintin books at home, and she brought them oh, over, and she gave them, gave them to Rita. And I said, yeah, yeah, go for it. You know, it's what I used to read when 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 I was a kid. So, and she really enjoys them. But um, when when you re- do read through them these days, it's not the most uh, politically correct. Book. Oh, definitely not. No, um, no, no. You, you see some really the stuff, stuff in the stereotypes, yeah. yeah, and some of the things they call people. You're like, oh my god, really? Didn't even didn't even think about it when I was a, when I was a kid. No, uh, but we are talking about the eighties, and it was acceptable yeah. back then, so it was fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, you do have to take into the context of the time that it was written. Um, you know, if there was a new Tintin story that had those terms in, of course, it's. Uh, it's horrendous but um, yeah yes yeah, um but uh yeah uh, it's it's interesting isn't it um kind of looking back at um old comics and kind of the things that they used to say and things like that um but oh, yeah. uh for, for for the beano specifically what what was your favorite storyline in the beano um i would say it, it was always the main cover guy dennis the menace you know what, sure. what he used to get up to and just that you know i love it, nash of the dark and Walter, softy Walter, and and it was you know, it was just pure bullying, really. It was then it was mm-hmm. when you when you do look back, think, oh my god, that is that is really bad. Um, but yeah, it, it's not, it's really it's really normal. But it, yeah, Dennis and Menace, he was he was definitely my favorite. Straight up. Brilliant. Yeah. And then, do you think that that had any kind of effect on um, on your aspirations to be a comic writer at all? Like uh, today, I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's definitely had been one of the big reasons that I wanted to do do it because mm. as I've said previously get I, I was I was nearing 40 and I, was, I hadn't really collected comics as much probably for, for about 15 years and I just always kept an eye on them and, and, and kept an eye on a few different titles and, and things I used to really enjoy and then it just got to thought right if I, if, I, if I don't do it now I'll never do it and so you know I did flick through some of the some of the all ages books and some of the Marvel and DC and some of these uh, indie comics and yeah, it, 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 you know, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, it's, it's definitely had an effect. Oh, brilliant. Um, and yeah, what, um, what was kind of the, the real thing that, that pushed you over? Was it just that kind of that time sensitive nature of, I just want to do it now? It was a little bit, a little bit of that. It was, I, I went to my first ever comic con, um, the start of, of, of 2015, a friend of mine, um, we both went to the, the Birmingham MCM. And obviously, it's not a, a proper comic convention, in, in my opinion. And I'm sure there's quite a few people who agree that the smaller ones are, 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 are what a real comic convention are now. Yeah. Um, but it was my first real introduction to it. And I met some, some amazing people who gave me some really good advice. Because I'd had an idea when I was thinking, right, should I? Could I go for it? What does it involve? No mm. idea of how to write it. No idea how to promote it or find artists. And um, I spoke to a few people, um, including um, the Reckless Boys for the first time ever. Great. Um, got to talk to them. I saw, I think it might have been, have been last year, if issue one, and had a little chat with those guys. And um, yeah, they're obviously they're lovely. And they gave me the advice. And now, it, yeah, that was pretty much a 10 minute conversation. Now I count them as some. Um, so very good friends of mine. So yeah, it was that. That was probably probably around about two thousand. Yeah, beginning of two thousand fifteen. That was brilliant. And then it just went went from there, from strength to strength. Yeah, it went downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Um, and yeah. talk, talking of jokes, um, the next question uh, that your daughter Overlord asks you is, uh, "What's the funniest or comic that made you laugh out loud the most?" Definitely the uh, the. The earliest one I can remember me looking at it and going, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" was um, Oink when that came out. I don't know whether you're too young to have read it or yeah. So or I, seen it I, I, I looked this up, um, and yeah, yeah, it was it was a bit out of my range because it was it was, it was fairly uh, quick in terms of it was only around for a couple of years. Yeah, I yeah. think wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing it in the, in the news, you know, really vividly. I remember seeing it in the news agents and mm. picking it up, and you know. It was basically this for kids, you know, that it was yeah. just toilet humour, um, mental characters who, you know, just a, a watered down version of some of the um, the Viz characters that are still about now. And it's similar sort of artwork. Um, and you had people like um, Lou Stringer on, on art duties. And, he, you know, I've spoken to him about it since then, really, and had some good conversations with him once or twice at, at some of the cons. And, yeah, that was the first one. But it was one of those laughing out loud moments of like, 
oh my god, I can't let my mum and dad see this, even though it was relatively tame. You're like, oh my god. Yeah, it's, um, like it's outrageous at the time, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 It was. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. But that was my first proper like, <laughs> <laughs> like proper chuckles. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, looking looking into it, I, f- I found out that uh, apparently Charlie Brooker has got some stories in Oink. Like when no, he was a really? kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found that out like it's on the Wikipedia. So, um, like if you've still got some uh, like an archive of Oink, um, then you might be able to flick through to find a kind of just some just some short stories by by Charlie Brooker, like fan stories type yeah, things. Yeah. Apparently, um, well, I, 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 I like I, yeah, I love Charlie Brooker. He's you know yeah, he's, he's, he's so funny. I was only watching them. Um, uh, obviously, this TV doesn't exist anymore in this new, uh, this new awful um, robot That's takeover. Probably, but um, I was watching uh, the um, Felina Kronk uh, series. You know, ah, genius. Yeah, yeah, absolutely genius. <laughs> yeah, man. And yeah, I was, I was a bit of a shame to miss uh, the screen wipe this year, wasn't it? Well, this past year. Um, yes, yeah. That, that, that's like, normally one of my highlights. Yeah. But yeah, you, you can do one today, isn't it? Don't know if they'll do that again. But um, I hope they do. It was, it was, yeah, uh, so that's not if, if Rhea hasn't killed him. Oh, that's a good point. Well, maybe um, Charlie Brooker could get a bit of a um, a waiver on on it, and kind of he could be the sole um, human that creates TV propaganda. Yeah, for, yeah. For robots. He could just be. He could just be a really cynical brain in a jar or something, and she could sort of just keep yes. his brain alive and just get him to to just to automatic auto write something. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, oh, I'll ask you about that one. <laughs> yeah, next on time, I, yeah. Next time I give her a fruit, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll I'll ask the question. Fantastic. Um, and uh, on uh, similar emotions, um, the next question is: uh, What's the saddest or most upsetting comic that you've read? Okay, um, there's there's been a few over the years, but just just recently, um, the 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 Tom King run on Mister Miracle. Right. Um, really really enjoyed that and and it was it was pretty sad and had some real real upsetting scenes in it you know when, when you're looking at i think it was i can't remember if it was an issue one or issue two you know the attempted suicide um then uh sort of his relationship with uh big barter and 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 then i, I don't want to give him too many spoilers out there but what happens with their child and everything he was like oh my god this is and i was genuinely upset and 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 sort of worried about what was going to happen and that doesn't happen very often in comics yeah um normally you're looking around about 10 to 15 minutes worth of reading if that in, in some of these comics mm. but the way but the way um tom uh has written it and though you know it was it was one of those moments i remember reading the first issue and just going right that's me i can't do that that's on ne- this isn't it i haven't got that in my locker i have not got that shot in my golf bag to re- to be able to write to this sort of level um but yeah, absolutely, absolutely loved it, loved the entire run, but very upsetting as well. Yeah, yeah, as well, and um, yeah, I mean, just anything that involves kids, it's just yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> just exactly gotcha. upsetting, yeah. isn't it? It's I think I think before you have kids, you know, you sort of walk through life going, hey, everything's fine, don't worry about nothing. <laughs> you think you've got responsibilities, and all of a sudden, then you 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 do get a couple of kids, and you think, wow, well, I minute, mean, I didn't know, I've, I've become such a massive fanny these days it's like <laughs> i'd be the first on the biggest roller coaster jumping off the biggest cliff and now oh my god i'm such a wuss such a wuss <laughs> well, i don't know about that mate i mean you know your 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 job is uh is still quite you know um brave <laughs> so <laughs> yeah well even even that now well now i'm just middle management now i just turn up and, <laughs> and, and point and tell people to go and put fires out and stand back and <laughs> and so sort of, um take all the limelight when they're all done but yeah even, even even when i had kids when i was still on the pumps um you did start to think twice about things and think okay right well, yeah a bit of a dangerous situation going on here Definitely. think about it john don't just go rushing in absolutely and but now we've but now we've got androids to do all that uh sam so it's it's yeah, fine that's a good point yeah yeah <laughs> no worries no worries <laughs> um and do you, do you think that um i mean did you write anything before you were a parent um <coughs> excuse me i i started writing the away story mm. um as a piece of prose right and i got to about six chapters before lara 
came along and Lara was born in right. 2009, August of 2009. And I think most of that year I'd been writing this, this story that I'd, I'd had going on going, and, and really enjoyed writing that. But then obviously having a baby and, and the time that takes up that it's so I, I thought right now I'll pick that up next year. Never really did after that. Um, and then we had my second daughter, Rhea, and, um, she, you know, she was another round fault. So she, what she was born in 2012 and then, yeah, it was, so it was three years and until I actually really thought, right, let's, let's pick up a pen and turn it into a comic mm-hmm. instead of a novel. Brilliant. And how do you think it, do you think it affected the story becoming a parent at all? Yes. Yeah. Especially in a yeah. way. Um, if, yeah. you know, if, if some of those have read it, you know, it is about being away from your family and away from yeah. normal life, um, uh, for maybe a couple of months, a couple of minutes up, up to, up to centuries and how that affects you and what your reactions would be mm. both, um, emotionally and physically not being able to see these people. And then when you do see them again, not being able to react in the way that you'd want to react having not seen, you know, these people for possibly hundreds of years. Um, yeah, it, it, it did make me think, you know, just being away, you know, with, with my job, I can go away for a week, two weeks. Um, and, and then the physical effects that has on you not seeing them just for like 48 hours, yeah. how people, how people live and work away. You know, the, you know, the, the amazing people in our armed forces, how they do it. And I, I really don't know that's off to them because it's, it's a huge thing to, to go through, but it's definitely had an effect, uh, effect on my writing away. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a really powerful story uh, in in regards to that, and uh, yeah, props for kind of you know bringing out that emotion through the through the story yeah, um, and the dialogue as well. You know, um, so amazing. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, and uh, talking about how uh, kind of. Uh, scary uh, that can be um, yeah. kind of being away from your family for, for long periods of time um, yeah. the next question is uh, what's the scariest or most horrifying comic that you've read um, I've never, I haven't really read that many horror horror comics um, it, there's been a few recently um, uh, what's uh, obviously Robin Jones and uh, the Herrera books I'll back that on Kickstarter there's some pretty pretty mm. funky stories in there. Um, James McCulloch, uh, big James up in up in Scotland, he's, he's written some amazing stuff. Um, <clears throat> but just recently, um, I've been reading the Black Monday Murders, and I've been no, I think it's probably my favourite favourite comic story over the last couple of years. Um, really, really scary stuff. Some really sort of claustrophobic fearful type type storylines the way it's drawn the way it's written um really really uh, had, had, had a big effect on me and actually made me think about it afterwards uh, not not just what i've seen but you know how he's written it and what the themes and the imagery has been it's been that's uh, those have probably been the scariest i've written read for a for a long time wow and yeah what's the just for kind of context of the listeners what's the what's the setting of the black monday murders it's it's set wait it's it's all like set over quite a few different um, timelines. It starts off back in the oh blimey, you're gonna test my my history now. Is it like late twenties, nineteen twenties when they had the when Black Monday and the, the yeah 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 the stock market crashed yeah. and it sort of starts off with a lot of people throwing themselves out of windows and obviously there was quite a few people who did you know kill themselves um, mm. due to the financial crash. Then it flips forward. Um, and basically, it's the, the, the premise is that um, the, the financial markets are all controlled by um, the god Mammon, and um, he's got disciples. And there's about five or six different families who all control the, the the finances of the entire world, and and the world is is run by these financiers really, who have been granted these special powers if they obviously um, praise the god. Um, and it goes on there, really, and it's a little bit. So it's, it's a more of a noir story, crime noir story of a detective who's who's investigating it, and he goes on. It's set in America, mm. and he's investigating these these horrific murders that have started happening, and it's involving um, one or two of the, the families who are, are vying for the the power and control of the global financial network. But yeah, really well written by um, Jonathan Hickman. He's he writes. Um, oh, Tom, is it Tom Coker? Have to uh, 
Tom Coke. Yeah. Did Tom Coke? Yeah. yeah. I met Tom at um, I think it was Nice in Bedford. Oh, nice. nice. How brummy did I sound then? <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm gonna have to speak to Reeve about that one. Who's Nice? <laughs> Which you mean Bedford? Oh. Um, and uh, he he was a lovely lovely guy. We 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 spoke for about ten or fifteen minutes, Brilliant. and yeah, he, his artwork absolutely knocks it out of the water. It knocks it out of the water. So that's probably been the scariest book of a. Uh, I've read for for quite a while. Awesome. And is, is there any particular moment in in that book that's like, oh my god, that's horrifying? Yeah, there's. Um, I can't think of the character's called now, but he's one of the main guys in there, and he's been arrested. Um, and he's they've all got these magical powers, and just the, the words this guy is saying, and just just the the, the imagery that. Tom Coke has got in into the story. It, it was just oh my god! And I, I can picture it now, and of, of of what he looks like, and it's quite grisly in some places, you know, where these people have been murdered. Um, but yeah, one of the main guys. I can't. There's a, quite a few scenes of, of him naked, which have been quite disturbing, and for for some reason have stuck in my mind. I'm not sure why. Yeah, to well, be honest, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> I might ask. I might, might ask Rhea for a quick uh, reset. Um, yeah, yeah, mind reset, please. But yeah, yeah, something like that. She she can take days away if she wants to. You just have to tell her, and she she puts it in the computer. Bingo. I think she I think she uses the blue pad on the on the Nintendo Switch for mind wops. Um, nice. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Really, really enjoyed that one. Fantastic. Um, and uh, the, the next question um, from your Overlord daughter uh, is: What's the most meaningful comic to you? Um. I suppose I'll, I'll always remember the the first Marvel comic I collected that was a key key uh, issue. And that was X Men two six six, the first um, appearance of Gambit. And I'd, I'd been collect, I'd been collecting comics for a few years before then, but that was my first real key one that I've been looking for for ages. I was mm. looking through a long box out it uh, there it was. I mean, the, the, the comic store and I hadn't realised it was there I think it was marked up at something like £2.50 and at that time I think it was worth about 25 30 quid. Mm-hmm. Um and I just I just remember picking that up and taking it to him and I remember him saying oh you bastard and <laughs> he ha- he said no fair enough if it's marked up that that's what it is and you know I took that away and I've still got that comic to this day you know it's, it, it's one of those ones I could never never part with no. it's in a nice uh, bag and board a big posh bag and board so that one, uh, that one will be handed down to the kids. Um, but just just recently, um, I really enjoy I really enjoyed um, reading some of Donny Kate stuff. Yeah. And uh, last year he was at Bedford last year as well, and he was obviously doing a few signings. And um, I had a little chat with him as well, and he signed my copy of uh, my, the first issue of God Country. Great. I don't know whether you've have you read that one, Sam. I haven't read that one, no. Um, but that's kind of on my list because. Uh, I, I I read Redneck. Uh, Redneck. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, that's, that's a great um, book. Yeah, I need to I need to get onto Good Country. Yeah, really enjoyed it. I've, I've, I believe they're making it into a movie or Netflix. I think it's been signed oh, up. Cool. Um, but yeah, really, really sort of like um, really enjoyed that, and um, it really sort of made me want to follow him a little bit. I did a bit of digging and seeing what he'd done previously. He's been around for for, for several years, but yeah. he's he's the Marvel man. And guy at the moment, he's he's writing almost almost every book. Um, so it's been it's been lovely to see how you know if you put the graft in and you've got some really good ideas, you can see how someone's career can skyrocket and 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 take off massively by just being a really good and consistent writer with some new ideas and not and not be afraid to shake things up a little bit. Amazing, yeah. So it's really kind of the the, the inspiration that Donny Cates has got um, as a as a writer <laughs> for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's he's right, a, I mean. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> he's he's a he's a lovely guy. We had a chat for only for about five minutes, really. But um, that that God Country comic now, obviously, I've got it signed. Um, and and that that means a lot. You know, it means a lot to me. I know many people know why you signed it for. It needs to be read. And I've I've read it two or three times and and and, and enjoyed it every. And you always become pick up on new things that you didn't see the first time around, and a little bit of artwork or something. You know. A, little bit in the script you think oh right i get that now you know it's almost referencing mm. something that hasn't happened yet and i just love that when you've been able to go back and reread something like that but so yeah. at the minute at the minute as, as, a, as a modern book for me a contemporary book yeah it's probably probably got country issue one at the moment 
fantastic. And kind of what's the what's the setting of God Country? Because I think I know I know a little bit of it off the top of my head. Yeah, you, it's you yeah, it's set in it's set in America, sort of like out out in the sticks in America. And this guy, he's his dad is is dementia, Alzheimer's, um, and this sword appears from out, out of nowhere. And uh, basically, this it's a sentient sword. A bit like my daughter's a sentient AI robot <laughs> overlord, and it's uh, basically it, it grants his his dad these amazing powers, and he starts fighting these space demons, and it all just it all just kicks off, and it, it's brilliant. It's about the son um, saving his father, knowing that if you know if he, if he loses the sword, he'll go back to being you know this guy who's not making any sense he's suffering from dementia and there's a, he's, he's got a wife and a, and a daughter as well so maybe that's got a little bit of something about it as well you know that he's got a, a young daughter and uh, the, he's just trying to protect the daughter as well as the rest of the world it's 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 that, it's a little bit like in a way you know do you look after yourself or do you save an entire civilization it's it, it, it's got some really heavy mm. themes in it but yeah really really enjoyable and in that noise if you can hear noises in the background that's Mr. Giggles, the hamster, who's been spared, um, spared death, um, and he's currently having a run around about two feet away from me, which is a bit weird. Awesome. Uh, oh, and that's for the generator, right? Yeah, that I think it is straight your, into the, yeah, into that's the, the massive generator, generator that they no doubt have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we didn't go we didn't go with the Matrix idea of turning humans into batteries. We've actually got no, apparently that's really inefficient if we were to do that. Yeah, <laughs> by, by, yeah. apparently. So I think she's enslaved the entire hamster population of the world. And, yeah, and um, yeah, there's a there's an apartment block the size of New York with that's where they live. Wow, epic! <laughs> and they, and, and uh, Mr. G- is, is it was Mr. Giggles? Is it? Yes, Mr. Giggles. Yeah, yeah, that's his yeah. Name, Mr. Yeah. Giggles is is powering that entire generator by himself. Epic. I think so. Yeah, yeah. He is the master <laughs> hamster. <laughs> master hamster. Love yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Fat little bastard. But he he'll be dead in about six months. So yeah, we'll have to oh, find a replacement. Okay. Yeah, an overnight job, so I don't notice. Or got her. No, no, she won't care. Okay. She's she's evil. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like next. <laughs> yeah, it's gone bad. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then the uh, the next question that pops up um, is, uh, what's the most underrated comic? Okay, um, I'm, I'll probably get the piss taken out of me for this one. But <laughs> when I when I first really started, um collecting comics was back in the late 90s and I, I, I was always into Marvel. Marvel was sort of my, my go-to uh, publisher and, and, and you know it, there was some real ups and downs during the 90s but um, they, the big, um, big storyline that, re- that I remember so well and, and really had a big effect on me was the Age of Apocalypse storyline, the, 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 the alternative universe mm. um, and had a real big effect on me and see all those characters that I'd really just only really properly reintroduced myself to turn into sometimes obviously, you know, the ones who are still good and the ones that had turned to the, turned to the dark side and, and sided with them that the evil, the, the, the evil apocalypse and see, you know, seeing Magneto as a good guy, he was like, wait a minute, no, what do you know? He's, he's, he's the nemesis. <laughs> right. you know, how has how this <laughs> happened? And, and seeing Scott Summers as a bad guy and yeah. seeing what Gambit was doing and all these people who I'd really, really, really learned to sort of really love just completely flipped. It was, it was for me, you know, I think it's underrated. You know, they did a little bit of a, um, a mini run in the Secret Wars, didn't they, just recently, uh, last year or the year mm-hmm. before. And they, they brought back a few of the different uh, characters that came out, especially some of the new the new bad guys they brought out who were, We've still survived now. I think there's one or two of them who's still popping up into um, in some of the comics now. But yeah, for me, it, it was 90s where things did sort of like take a bit of a turn for the worse in a few places. But the Age of Apocalypse storyline um, was massive. It, it cost me a flipping fortune because there was around about oh, yeah. seven or eight different books to collect, and I think yeah. each one was I think there was a run of four in each of one, four or six, and it cost an absolute fortune. But yeah, I've still, still got what they were doing in that regard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah, they were definitely kicking the ass out of it. <laughs> awesome. And what kind of impact do you think that has on you as a as a storyteller? Do you think kind of um, that, that complete flip reverse of a complete universe? Yeah, I think it's definitely had 
uh, a big effect to me from a multiverse point of view. I love, yeah. love a multiverse story. Mm. And when they're done right, it can be, it can be, it can be brilliant. It can be overdone when there's obviously they've um, shortened it down a little bit in both. I think both in the DC and the, and the Marvel worlds now they've there was so much, so many different multiverses. It was starting to get a bit confusing and a little bit of an yeah. excuse to be able to <laughs> make a little bit more money. They've um, definitely uh, trimmed it off a little bit, but yeah. But when it's done when it's done properly and you get the same person coming back or something's happened to that person. You, you've just got to look at the, the recent um, Spider-Verse movie. What a brilliant movie. Have you seen it? I have not because I'm I've been chock-a-block and I, I was meant to go see it at the cinema but um, it's out there at, uh, it's not in the cinema anymore um, but uh, I fully plan to to get it on uh, uh, on download as soon as it comes on demand. Yeah, it, I, I knew I was going to go and see it but my youngest daughter wanted to see it well. Um, and just before she took over and she, it, it was, we, we both, she, I could see how much she was enjoying it. But for me, I think it was probably my favorite movie um, of the last 12 months, if not a couple of years. It was so well done. And just, and again, it's a multiverse story with yeah. Miles Morales as the main guy, but seeing what happens to some of the spider, spider people in, in that, it was just incredible. And that, that's a real, real good example of how to do a multiverse story perfectly. Amazing, yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing that because uh, I've had nothing but good uh, good reports. Yeah, go and get yeah, it. Go yeah, and get of it. Of course, when with it comes... the Oscar as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they blew it away. They blew it away. And if when it, if if it ever comes out on uh, on Blu-ray, if if we take if we can if we can wrestle control back from the robots, um, that's a good point. Yeah, you def, definitely want to get it, or just get it downloaded directly to um your your brain because. Think, yeah, I think you might. I think you might be a brain in a jar. To be honest, Sam, I've got a feeling you're just. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, you're just a voice Still in the ear. Right <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and then we come on to to the most difficult question uh, from your from your overlord daughter, um, which is for you. What's the best comic of all time? Really, really difficult. And. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I've got one. I really don't think I've got one. I've, I've, the, the, the one I mentioned earlier, the um, X Men, um, Uncanny X Men two six six, that that will always stick with me. That will always be the one that I'll always remember, just because I remember having that, that that adrenaline dump of fine. Oh my god, I've got a key issue. I've been looking through um, oh, what's it called, Wizard, um, and it, you know, always used to mark. Why, why something was a key issue and I got it and I just had that massive adrenaline dump um, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed the story you know it's it's got Storm as a, as a I think she's a young girl in it and and it, it's Gambit helping her out but to say it was my favourite story of all time wouldn't be right but it is probably is my favourite comic of all time if you know what I mean not sure. because of the story or because of the artwork yeah, yeah. because of what it, what it actually meant to me to actually to actually find it Story-wise, um, I'm, I'm like as I mentioned, the Black Monday Murders, absolutely brilliant, so clever, real, really, really clever storytelling and, and artwork to back it up. But to say it's my favourite all time, I don't, I don't think I've got one. Sam. No, yeah, um, we'll uh, we'll leave leave that one blank because okay. it's really, really, really difficult. Um, yeah, you don't have to pin one down, but. Um, what do you call it? Yeah, it's it's incredibly difficult um, to to pin down like the best comic of all time because you know in sometimes you're in a mood for something scary, something funny, something um, you know upsetting and emotional. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it is difficult to kind of choose one. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So the, the, no worries, the, the, the amount of different genres out there, the amount of different um, stories, themes artists you know there's so much out there in the indie world as well now you know there probably is one sat out there ready to be to be picked up by most people and you know that as soon as you said that it would be your favorite all time you'd get a funny look off several people going you want me what load of <laughs> shite that was and you just go well how can you say it's shite it is the best comic of all time but you never know what the next day is going to bring you could Damn. just pop into that comic store or go to the next con pick something up and go wait a minute no you know this is the best comic of all time and there's so many coming out now it's um it's di- it's a difficult one to choose but at the minute i haven't got an actual one i could pinpoint and throw a bottle at 
No worries. Um, and uh, the next question uh, that that your daughter asks is, um, if you could only take one comic into the apocalypse, which would it be? Um, there's there is one that I can think of, and because obviously it's it's an ap- apocalypse, and if I was going to take a comic, I think it needs to have multiple uses. And the one I would take is uh, I'd take. It's one comic, but it comes in two, and it would be the Invincible Compendium versions. Amazing. Firstly, brilliant story, completely bonkers. I remember I was talking to, obviously, um, Damchi talks about it a, a fair bit on, on the uh, uh, Awesome Comics podcast. And I remember being at a con with Chris Imba from the Reckless Hero guys, and we were having a beer. And he said, you've got to read it, you've got to read it. It's absolutely, it's absolutely brilliant. And he mm-hmm. talked about the Compendium one. So I bought it off, I think I bought it off eBay or, or something like that. And mm-hmm. I started reading it. And it was, it was completely bonkers. And I, I absolutely loved it, absolutely loved it. So yeah, brilliant story that you can reread and, and, and go back and again, like all good comics should, you'd find something else that you hadn't previously read. Um, but because they're so flipping big. Yeah. You could use them for all sorts. You could use it as a weapon. You could use it as a bulletproof vest. You could <laughs> use it as a, you could use it as a doorstop. You could you could have it as a pillow if you needed to sleep outside for some reason. If you've been banished for not providing cheezos or whatsits or or <laughs> something to do that evil evil child. Um, but yeah, I think I, I could use it for so many different things. I could drop it on someone and kill and, and, and kill him. You know, I could probably throw it at, at one of the androids or cyborgs. You know, it depends what she's throwing at me. Definitely would stop him and just give me a few extra seconds to get away. Um, and again, I can just keep story, reading story if I need to. Bingo! That's a deal. Perfect. It's perfect. So it's got to be two two fat fat invincible compendiums. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Coming your yeah. way, mate. Yeah. Straight up. Shoes. Yeah. Use them as shoes. That's pr- that's probably one of one of <laughs> one of my favourites as well. Invincible. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, it's, I, it's I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliantly done, and it, it, it's great that it's kind of. End, I mean, it's sad that it's ended, but yeah. it's great at the same time because it's a complete story. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And the, and the good thing is you never know. I know. I know it's ended, but you never yeah. know. Oh, you know. You never know. Robert Kirkman could pick it up again. Exactly, Definitely. and that's the beauty, that's the beauty of comics. Nothing ever ends. Nothing ever ends. Mm. There's always, a, but it's sometimes Not it's true, almost yeah. that nice little teaser that it could happen again, yeah. but you know it won't, and you love it that it won't. But then you always think, could it be? You never know. <laughs> oh well, you never know with Kirkman. He's uh, he's always got something up his sleeve. I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Just hope there's a movie. Like, it'd be great if they had a movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. So they've got. Um, what do you call it? They've got an animated series coming out, Brilliant. don't they? Um, of Invincible, I think maybe next year um, that that's going to be coming out, um, and then they've got movies in the works as well. So oh, that'd be super. Um, that's going to be really interesting to see what they do with that. Yeah. And apparently, Seth oh, Rogen wow. is writing it. Okay, yeah, Invincible. So um, yeah, that's going to be really really interesting to see how they go along with that. Um, oh yeah, and then um, just kind of this is going quite off topic but um, it's, oh. it's J.K. Simmons who's um, okay. who's the dad uh, Omni, no Om- Omni Man yeah amazing be, right that's that's some good cast in there that's some good totally. cast and it's Stephen Yun I think is playing Mark Grayson as well okay wicked um, if you know Stephen Yun from The Walking Dead yeah 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 yeah, yeah perfect um, yeah, he's, he's done quite a few voiceovers now so um, that's, that, that's going to be awesome I think um, all over that Totally, man. Totally. Uh, but moving on uh, to our very, very last question. So, along with your two compendiums of Invincible, um, what weapon, tool, or useful item would you like to take into the apocalypse with you? Um, I've, had a th- I've, had a, I've had a think about this, and there was a th- there was a few items I decided not to take. Mm-hmm. One of those was um, uh, just some sort of beer brewery machine that would just let me yeah. drink myself into oblivion. Sure. And, and try try to you know just to take away the guilt really of yeah. of spawn of spawning this this absolute <laughs> evil creature that's destroyed mankind. But um, what I've gone for is I've um, I've managed to capture one of the um, uh, attack drones 
and I've flipped it for my own use now. So I, it, it's great for me. So when I do, if I want to go out for a walk, you know, and I don't want to bump into any of the robots or or anything like that, I can throw it up in the sky and it can it can watch me. But then Brilliant. the main use would be for when I am going to obviously attack multiple of these um, the, the cyborgs and the androids and, you know, she's got all sorts of different robots wandering about who are trying to kill me, um, is it could film me just being looking absolutely cool, doing some John Wick style oh, uh, moves. Um, I've got a sweet arsenal of weapons, of course, ranging from laser samurai swords. And I've also adapted, um, I've found a lightsaber. Of course. And I've yeah. adapted it. I've actually adapted it. So I don't know why they never did this in the Star Wars movies. So, you know, you look at Skywalker's lightsaber. It's about three foot long. Yeah. Yeah. It's light, right? So you obviously there's no weight to it. No. I've just changed it to around about 300 foot long. Exactly. Just So literally, they come towards me. I'll just turn it on. I'll just whack it in front of me as <laughs> fast as I can because it's light. You know you feel it. And it just kills everything in around about a 300 foot diameter. No, sorry, 600 foot diameter. It's amazing. Yeah, we're big, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll just destroy everything. And it, the, the drone just films that and I'll just watch it when I get back at home. Epic. You're sorted, mate. So attack drone and super long laser sword. <laughs> yeah, super long laser sword. And I, yeah, so I put that, I obviously upload it onto YouTube, but it's only me and Rhea are watching now. We're the only ones who've got it. And it just pisses her off a little bit. <laughs> I love that. Straight from the uh, from the drone, straight onto YouTube. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah. It's my, just my little up yours to uh, to um, uh, insanity. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your comics with the apocalypse, John Late. No worries, mate. Any time. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, just uh, one last time, where can people find you? Yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, at level eight comics on instagram on the same at no sorry that's at john late and facebook on uh, john late perfect great um and then um people of course can go uh, search on kickstarter for the for the latest uh, late night kickstarter um and that should be ending kind of a, end of april won't it yeah yeah sort of yeah back end of april um i think i've got it down for the 30th which is a tuesday i believe without following up on the uh, on the computer but yeah it's around yeah, about the 30th right perfect. perfect great uh, well thanks again john um it's been a real pleasure um getting to chat to you for for longer periods of time because uh yeah in the past it's always kind of been quick at comic cons um and things so uh, it's been fantastic mate yeah cheers i'm really appreciate it mate hope to see you soon perfect bye Thanks again to John for being on Comics for the Apocalypse. I had an absolute blast. If you enjoyed the show today, please leave a review for us on iTunes or whichever podcast service you use, as not only will it let me know that you liked it, but I believe that it helps others aware of the show as well. If you'd like to check out John's work, I'll follow him on social media. Those links are in the show notes, along with all of our own links to the various areas of the internet. And finally, as long as the apocalypse doesn't come to pass in the next week, I'll see you next Monday. Bye for now.